Hi, I'm Tom and I'm an artist and this is Painting Lab and in this video I'm going to give you two completely simple techniques that will let you target and tackle your mistakes with real confidence. So when is a mistake not a mistake? Well, when you can use it to your advantage. This video is gonna be really quick, really simple, and anyone can follow these techniques. Then in a second video, I'm gonna show you how these simple basics kind of scale up into what seems to be very impressive painting, but you'll see in fact how simple it really is. At the end of this video, I'm gonna come back and tell you a bit more about how Painting Lab is gonna operate from now on and how you can become actively involved in a revolution to change the way that people learn to draw and paint. But right now, I think it's time we got on with some painting. Hi there, so the two techniques I'm going to show you today are blending and uh, paint manipulation or like pushing paint around on the surface of your picture. Let's, you know, imagine you are in a world where you literally cannot draw a stick man. Well, you could manage the head okay. And you might be able to manage the body, but when you come to the arm, oh dear. Uh, and what about another arm? Whoops. Um, and then, oh yes, you were right. You really can't draw a stick man, can you? And uh, uh, well, oh, you attempted a knee there. Let's put the knee in. Oh no. Um, and let's do another, let's do another leg. Um, where's that gonna go? Whoops. <laughs> so an example of uh, what some people have in their mind's eye when they think about their own abilities to draw and paint. So now what I'm gonna show you is uh, this pushing and pulling and sweeping technique. Uh, and really what I'm gonna try and prove to you is that putting paint marks down is just the beginning of the story when you're using oil paint. Um, you could also do this with acrylic. So I painted my paint surface, which is a piece of cardboard with kids school glue, PVA glue, nothing fancier than that. And that means that I can push and pull my paint around on the surface of my picture. If you've been following this channel, you'll recognize this technique. I use this a lot in my own painting and uh, Basically what I'm doing is I'm using a clean brush with a little bit of my thinner on it, which for me is white spirit. If you're using acrylic, this could be water. Uh, and because acrylic dries much quicker, you'll have to be a little quicker in your technique. But, but basically using this technique, you can adjust anything you like. And um, really, you can turn anything into anything else. And because oil paint stays wet, you can have at least a couple of days to get things exactly the way you want them before moving on to the next stage of, of your oil painting. So remember what that arm was like a few minutes ago? Let's try the same principle with these legs. And I'm gonna work as quick as I can because I wanna move on to the next uh, part of this demo. Let's get rid of that knee. And we'll try and sweep this paint there. Now we've thinned a lot of this out, so we might need to put a tad more paint back in. We'll see. No, I think that's okay. All right, so that's a very basic demo of how you can push and pull paint around on the surface of a picture. Now let's move on to some blending and I'll show you how we can team these kind of techniques up with our blending techniques. And to do that, I've got a one inch wide watercolor brush, which goes to show you that you don't have to stick with the rules. I found that this is quite soft and fluffy. It's almost like a makeup brush. Um, and so it's ideal for blending, so I use it. Um, and to blend, all I need to do is follow the direction of these paint marks and keep feathering the paint. If I stick in this position, the size of the blend is not that big but uh, if I travel over into the white, I will push more of the yellow in, of course, and then if I travel back the other way, uh, you could see that coming, couldn't you? Yeah, we can spread that blend out. I know, so I know this is super simple, but uh, well, oil painting, portraiture, landscape painting, all of this stuff depends upon edges, actually, the way that one color meets another. Um, it's one of the ways that you get a feeling of light falling over things and places. 
So as a last example in this, uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how blending and this uh, sweeping technique come together to uh, give you um, the skills to sort of paint three-dimensional objects, really. Once again, I'm working with a clean brush to refine these shapes. And I can make a decision about how to refine it. And then I can take a couple of moments just to see whether it's the kind of thing I want or whether I want to refine a little more. And as I refine these shapes, you might start to get a sense of what I'm trying to paint. Just tidy up there a little bit. Now this fall off of light here, I mean, who hasn't seen that in a kind of traditional still life? You know, 700 years of painting of included techniques like this, although, um, you know, it was only with the introduction of oil paints that you could really get blends as subtle as this. And I think that is about what we want for this demo. I'm trying to paint you a very basic kind of cylinder shape. Just put in a quite thin layer of burnt umber on the top there. And it would cast a shadow. And as the light's coming from this direction, our shadow is gonna be around about here. I wanna carve one edge against another. Oh, do you know what? Whilst we're here, I might as well put a ring pull in. <laughs> We've more or less got a, a Coke can here. And I might want to come back and just tweak by removing paint. And these techniques are just as simple as that. Um, so in the next video, I'm going to show you how you can extend beyond this So I really hope you've enjoyed what I've shown you there. Um, I didn't want to be too complicated about any of it, but in a second video, link below this one, I'm going to show you how these techniques apply to what appears to be really skillful uh, painting, the kind of stuff that only talented people might make. And you'll see how this kind of thing has very little to do with talent and everything to do with following a few basic principles. In the second video, we're going to be using the comparator mirror to do this. It's what's going to allow you guys to follow along with everything that I'm talking about with real genuine confidence. Don't forget to subscribe, to like, all the normal stuff. Uh, you can also go to our website, paintinglab.com, and sign up to our mailing list, which means that you'll be amongst the first to hear about the release of Tim Jennison and I's Comparator Mirror. So until next time, thanks very much for watching, and uh, I'll see you next time. <laughs>